Hey gang, Diana here today. Welcome to the studio. I'm going to be working with some stencils from Joggles. These are from the floral and fronds. I think that's what it's called. I'll link them down below. These are just fabulous stencils. They're all out, you know, foresty type images, which, you know, I love this sort of imagery and these are especially cool because they have they include the mask so I'll be using both today I'm just clipping away the little bits the little burrs that are include uh, keeping those in into in the stencil the mass in the stencil and now I'm adding some this is golden paint. Uh, its color is uh, green gold. And I did add some, you just saw me squirt uh, some glazing medium into that pile of paint because I don't want this paint to be opaque. I want to work in transparent layers and that's the ticket. You could use, uh, I think Liquitex carries one, and I was also experimenting with the glaze from Faber-Castell, which worked great as well. So there's lots of choices out there on the market. I'll list a few below. Maybe you have some at home uh, that you have. And I did the background, and now I'm sort of playing with some collage bits. Not sure what I'm going to do pretty sure it's going to be cottages but I just going through my collage bits to decide and what I do with these maybe you have a better way but what I've been doing is I just put them in mason jars and I dump them out <laughs> that's my big solution to storing these bits and pieces so I did give these a squirt with some inks just to give them some color and uh, some more little houses uh, that's a pretty inexpensive dye I got through Amazon and then the others are just little bits of paper and little circle uh, cuts from a paper punch whatever I have and I do like to use a strong glue and then either a brayer or a bone folder to make sure those are down well. Now I was really experimenting with a lot of things on this piece and one of the things I wanted to check out and work with was the Adina Wakely media paints and I'm pretty sure I'm still using the green and some gray and that green gold and the gray is from Dick Blick that's out right now I just wanted to tone it down a little bit so I'm going right around the houses with the stencil mask the mask from the stencils and so and so what's showing is the underpainting right now so this is a pretty this was a pretty intensive project I I kind of got into it further than I thought I would so I think there's I don't know how many hours of video <laughs> wound up with on this but I am editing it eh, sorry for this little upside down bit okay we're back to normal and I've got out the turquoise Dina Wakely's turquoise uh, which I think I mixed with I mixed it with cheddar Dina's cheddar and that's a great color but my basic strategy for mixing greens uh, is to have a few greens and I mean cool greens like blue greens warm greens like green gold or yellow greens and also adding to that I usually like to use some just a tiny bit of black uh, just a tiny drop and um, the uh, yellows I like the Quinn nickel azo and I, I'm thinking the cheddar from Dina it behaves somewhat like that nickel azo from Golden's and that, that's basically the strategy there are about a million greens when you look out there and that, that, that's kind of a fun game is to when you're out and about just just look out 
beyond and see what kind of greens you can see. How many? Count them. How many greens? So here I am just piling layers of that uh, fern mask over and over again. And oh, here comes the green and the um, cheddar mix, the turquoise cheddar mix, which was sort of a beautiful olive. Um, and you can get that olive color from Dina's palette. She has a very nice olive. Uh, I'll link all these below. I just had a really good time with this. These stencils are super fun to work with, I have to say. Uh, I could just as easily have done a great big piece of paper just spritzing it over and over again, which I am gonna, I will do at some point. I think that would be wonderful for the background of a, uh, or for the cover of a journal. Uh, and, and there's some darker green that I mixed. That is probably some, um, probably some golden turquoise or blue green. Like I said, use whatever you have in the green family and just just play just try mixing it here I'm just going into those areas that are uh, where the stencil didn't quite uh, cover that uh, bit where the collage is just covering that up and I wanted to make the bottom of all of this a darker so I'm using a rag uh, to blend it out and with that glazing medium, it extends the dry time of your paint. Any of them, the brands will do that. And that's kind of nice to be able to blend out if you don't want a lot of brush work. In your, and I thought that would be a little distracting with this painting since I do have all of that stenciling in the background. Now that I'm looking at this, I really do want to make a big piece of paper and a journal cover from this. And now here is that uh, that uh, hot pink, I forget exactly the color, I'll link it. Really nice and I did layer this up a couple of times. I put a layer down, let it dry, came back with the stencil again, put another layer and you can see I'm using the uh, a little bit of yellow paint on a sponge uh, on one of those mini blenders to add some extra color to that stencil so it's not quite flat um, I didn't I like that flat look that you get from stencils uh, but I didn't want it here I wanted a little bit of dimension so now I'm zooming out a little bit and I'm doing a little fussy work here I'm adding some bright yellow greens and I, I'm i pretty sure yeah this is just a flat brush and I'm just sort of uh, flicking it and uh, bouncing it gently so that I just get some texture just adding to that so just to pull that that front of that pa painting the foreground forward so those you almost get the feeling that you are peeking through those flowers and finding this little village hidden in the woods and uh, so that's just just a little flicky just you can practice these things and you can learn to do them pretty easy it just takes a certain amount of Oh, uh, what's that called? Memory in in, in your hand. Um, oh, scrubby brush time. I love using a scrubby brush. And I'm just blending some color out. I wanted to darken that whole area around the houses. So then you have this sort of cove-like feeling. So I'm just adding some darker colors again using that glazing medium so that it extends the dry time that's really my best friend when I'm using acrylic paints and I am super out of out of practice with acrylics I haven't used them in a few years so this was very fun um, little rusty but really fun uh, to play with acrylic paints again 
that white blob on my palette in the lower left is the glaze, glazing liquid. You can add the glazing liquid straight ahead to your um, painting too. Just brush it on there. Scrubby, scrubby. So that was super fun to use those joggles, stencils, and all of the different green paints. And I hope you enjoyed this and learned something new. And uh, leave a comment below, like, subscribe for more videos. Thanks for visiting with me today. I appreciate your time. Talk to you soon.